Welcome back, everybody, to the Full Tank Motorcycle Podcast. This week, we're at Motorcycle Live, the UK's biggest and best motorcycle show. And we've had a bloody good day, haven't we, mate? Yeah, it's been a man. good day. Yeah, tiring, but good. Very busy. We've been shooting content for the main Motorbob channel, but also, we thought we'd take the chance, now it's quietened off at the end of the day, to take you for a little walk, show you some of our favorite bikes. First up, we're at Suzuki, and there's some rather interesting bikes. I do like the new Hayabusa 40th anniversary, no, 25th anniversary edition. Yeah. Very orange, very punchy. That one yeah, definitely caught orange. my eye. But one you said you liked a bit was this, the yeah. GSX S1000 GX. Yes, I think what I mean by that is like, it's surprising. I was saying this to you, right? Most bikes uh, look better in the flesh. Yeah. Almost all bikes, in fact, look better in the flesh. So if you don't like the look of it from the pictures, which I didn't really with that one, yeah. you might actually change your opinion when you see it in real life. And I'd say that has turned me around a little bit. It's turned you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I'd accept that. I think also, like, from a technical perspective, it does actually look quite good. Yeah. Uh, it's their first ever, did you know this, their first ever bike with semi-active electronic suspension. Did I tell I you that I think you earlier? did tell me that, yeah, but I had forgotten it, so that's brand new information to me. <laughs> that is, I mean, that is big for Suzuki. They've yeah. been a little bit behind the curve on that one, so it's good. And it looks like fully comprehensive in terms of all the features, anti-dive and all that. Quite a cool looking bike, like you say. Yeah, nice colors too. Great engine. Have you ridden one of the inline fours, the thousands from Suzuki? Uh, older ones, yeah, I forget. I yeah. did the Katana for sure, yeah. So look, this is based on the K5, I believe, which goes way yes. back. So it's not gonna be really any different, but smooth, sounds good, Qu actually quite talky as well, yeah. uh, but also really quick. And I think plenty enough power for touring and that sort of riding. I actually don't really have any downside for this bike. It is about 15 grand. I don't know if that's sort of money where you're starting to think, well, can I buy something a bit more desirable or like European or something? Possibly, I don't know, but you can tell me if that's in line with its competition. Is that is that still a bit of a bargain? Or is uh, it what is the competition? I suppose something like the Ninja 1000 SX from Kawasaki, but that's definitely a couple grand, I think, lower, maybe even less. Yamaha Tracer 9, perhaps, yeah, I but I think, again, so. that's a little bit less expensive, unless you go for the Tracer 9 GT Plus, which we looked at earlier. Well, I was going to say, do they have the trick suspension like this one, though? Yes, it does, and it has radar cruise control. But the Plus does, and the Plus is more expensive. Is yes, right? the Plus is probably the most equivalent, and it does get a radar. Uh, which gives you like active cruise control and it ties into the engine and the braking and the suspension as well. It firms the suspension up when the radar tells it to slow down yep. in order to stop it diving forward. So pretty comprehensive. I think that's probably the most comparable bike. But anyway, look, it's another option. Yep. And like I say, well, like you said, sorry, it actually does look a lot better in the flesh, especially in this Definitely. sort of like forest green, not a color that I'd expect necessarily from Suzuki, but it really looks quite good. And so if you're looking for this kind of bike, it's just like, I wouldn't gloss over this. Get down to a deal and no, have a really, look. No, really, yeah, check it out. I would compare it. Next up, we're at the Honda stand, and the bikes that we've been most, I uh, guess, engaged with, you being a current Africa Twin owner, yep. are the two updates to the Africa Twins, so the base model and the Adventure Sports. Now, first impressions, what we're thinking of the looks, they've done a little bit of an update. It's a little bit more edgy, I'd say. Yeah, it's not a huge leap forward, even from mine, actually. So mine's the 2016. I yeah. think it's, it's very similar to it. It is an improvement, it is a tweak, but I don't think it looked particularly dated, so they haven't changed it. It's you know, I've thrown it been, out completely. Well, it's always been such a good looking adventure bike, hasn't it? That it's not really needed like a big overhaul. It's like they just tweak the headlight, they just tweak the bodywork, yeah. and even the paint jobs. There's always a black one, then there's a red, white, and blue one, yeah. and then there's a white, blue, and red one. And they just tweak them and evolve them, and yeah. they still look absolutely brilliant. One thing you said is you like the look of the new tubeless spoke rims on the... I do. That looks really yeah, good in the flesh. There is, which one's got the smaller wheel on it as well? Yeah, Adventure that Sports. One. Yeah, yeah. So it's not that noticeable, I've got to be honest. It still looks okay and it still looks appropriate. In the photos, I think I said or made a bit of bigger deal about it, sort of looking a little bit out of place. Yeah. But I think it looks okay. Realistically, if you're road riding, I think that's going to feel quite a bit better as well. Definitely that, yeah. Um, the only thing that I pointed out in our walk around of the stand on the main channel is now the Adventure Sports in the UK anyway, I think it varies by market. You can only get it with DCT. We discussed this recently, yeah, but also yeah, you can yeah. only get it with the electronic suspension. And so that means really the only adventure sports you can buy in the UK is fully maxed out in terms of like the big choices of spec. And so that means the starting price now, mate, is, have you seen that? Oh yeah, 17 yeah. <laughs> which really puts it right up there with like a GS, a Multistrada V4, a Tiger 1200 in their fancy specs as well. And so the question is, I mean, 
Can you see anyone paying 17 and a half for a 100 horsepower bike? Uh, maybe not, but I think they should look at it, but I get that the other bikes why might have would the they, edge. Why should they look at it? <laughs> well, as an owner of it, I had somebody look at mine recently, right? Mm. And they, they were like, oh, they're still holding their value and I don't get why. And I was like, well, then you're never gonna buy one. If you don't get it, it's not something someone can talk you round on. Mm. If you walk into a Honda dealership, they're not going to be able to talk you round. If you're just basing it off the horsepower and everything else, as we know, that's not the full story, right? Yeah. 100 horsepower is fine. Yeah. I don't feel lacking with that at all. But with some people, they just want, you know, you feel like you're getting less for the money. So what you're saying is this is the actual thinking man's adventure bike. Yeah, we'll go with that. Rather than the <laughs> spec sheet sort of magpie who sees a high power number and just goes with that. Spec sheet magpie. Yes, that's the term I'm going to go with. I mean, there is no wrong answer. Honestly, those bikes are great as well. So I get why you would want to go for that as well, you know, but... Personally, I still think for me, this has got a place in my heart, obviously because I've owned one as well. I know how good they are. I have ridden others. I just really like an Africa Twin. I would say, in my experience as well, it is a bike that maybe outperforms what it looks like on the spec sheet. 100% like, that. There's so much torque. It's such yeah, a yeah, satisfying engine as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. It also just feels a bit more cheeky to me. Yeah. And the other ones that I've ridden, it feels a bit more raucous, especially if you stick on an aftermarket exhaust on it and you get a nice like snarl out of the engine. They just feel a bit cheeky, a bit more raw. They are so good off-road as well. I think that's one of the reasons people like them. Perhaps that detracts a little bit on this, but maybe with the price now, 17 and a half grand, you're less likely to take it off-road where it might get damaged anyway. Come on, <laughs> yeah. like, you've got to be deep pockets if you're going to be doing that. But it has to be said, the, the base bike, you can still pick that up in a fairly basic spec. And that now comes in at still around 13 grand, I think it starts, you know, with a manual transmission and without the electronic suspension. Uh, but it's got those nice little bits, like we say, uh, bigger windscreen, it's adjustable now. Is yours fixed? Mine was fixed, yeah. Yeah, so that's a big deal. And you've got the tubeless wheels, which I don't know about you, but I'd much rather have those on any bike, pretty much. So uh, much easier to repair. Fantastic looking. That's probably one of my favorite looking adventure bikes at the show and outside of the show. The base spec now with the spoke wheels laced to the edges and that particular red, black, white yeah, and blue. Nice. Beautiful. Love that. Earlier, when we came here and I said, can we film this little Honda Dax? You went, what? That? I said really, I think, yeah. Yeah. What's your surprised. problem with it? I've got a bone to pick. <laughs> <There's> no... <laughs> it was a surprise to me. I just didn't know this would be like high on your list of uh, grabs for today. It's actually a lot of fun. We reviewed it last year okay. and it's just a little bike I'd love to have. Mainly because I think I could fit it in the back of the van without taking the second oh, row easily. out. Yeah, That'd yeah. be so much fun. Well, if you've got like a camper van, you see him strapped to the back of yes, you sometimes. Yes, exactly. £3,800 though, as a toy. That's a bargain. It's the little bike that can do <laughs> anything. It does look bomb-proof. It looks like it would just keep going. If you're the sort of biker who likes to use your particular mode of transport as a means of meeting other people, when I was out riding that when I had one for a couple of weeks, literally... It's a 3,800 pound conversation starter that can also transport you. You could honestly. be on something that was like 16 grand. You'd be annoying a lot of people when they turn up and they want a conversation about their bike and no one cares and you turn up on that and someone goes, oh mate, nice bike. Also, it's twist and go. It's got a centrifugal clutch, I think, or something like that. So, you know, very easy to ride. And I just remember going on some of the roads that I review like bigger bikes on, you know, with like long corners and you are wide open on the throttle and you're so close to the ground <laughs> trying to get it to go quickly and keep momentum up that it just feels like super fun to ride. I think it's got a heel shifter as well, is it? Yeah, it's got a heel shifter. Heel shifters are cool. It's a heel shifter. Rather than a normal shift peg yeah. where you would put your foot under it and lift it to shift up. Oh yeah, You yeah, just okay. bang it with your heel. Uh, so cool. have I changed your opinion? I mean, I liked it anyway, to be honest. I did say really but that wasn't a really like i hate this bike it was more like a all right but yeah is this is this the bike you're going to focus okay. on the fuel being in the frame as well yeah that's a great thing great in my balance way. yeah keeps it nice and oh, central yeah, it's a performance thing <laughs> it's optimizing the center of mass yeah that's it cracking bike loved it question are kawasaki the most forward-thinking motorcycle manufacturer at the moment i mean they've got two electric bikes here two hybrid bikes and there isn't another major player i don't think who's got an electric on the market yet hybrid as well was that sort of uh, explain that one to me well as you would think yeah. it's got a 500 cc parallel twin okay. uh, the same as we saw in the eliminator 500 i okay. think or very closely related and then also a battery and motor 
okay. and it will switch between the two. Right, so it doesn't use both of them like, you know, with some fancy sports cars where it, like, it bumps up the power, yeah. I don't think so. I'm yet to ride it and find out, but I don't think so. I think at lower speeds it's on electric and you can choose as well between uh, EV mode or HEV mode. It doesn't have a gear shifter or clutch right. because obviously it's got to be able to switch between electric and internal combustion. So you can't necessarily do that yourself. And so what you've got is something a little bit like DCT. It will make the shifts for you. Yeah. And you can, on the bars, switch between manual and automatic. And then if you do want to shift gears manually, you do it with buttons. Very fancy. Yeah. That's really cool. It looks really good. What surprised me about seeing it in the flesh is just how small the fuel tank is. It looks really yeah, yeah. narrow. And then yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, I get it, because it doesn't really need any. Well, yeah. it needs less fuel, let's say. Kind of unusual looking bikes, all of them, because yeah, a little bit. the proportions are different fundamentally from an internal combustion bike, which is what we're used to seeing. So sure. the uh, electric ones look like they got a bit missing at the front where the yeah, engine yeah. extends down a bit more. The hybrid, I think, looks just a little too plump. It's like a Ninja 650 <laughs> right, okay. that they've squeezed more stuff into. Yeah, yeah. But despite those slightly unusual proportions, I think they've done quite a good job of sort of bringing the design language close enough to the other bikes on their stand. I didn't so even notice. That's how good that was, right? We were shooting because we would concentrate on the camera, but yeah, I generally, and so you just, just like told me. Some Kawasaki's, don't they? Yeah. I took it for granted, really. But now that I'm looking at it a little bit more detailed, yeah, that's really cool. I would say that's a good vote for them being the most forward thinking or advanced. They've certainly got it out quicker than anyone else, so that's impressive. Hats and it is off. Kawasaki, so it's not going to be, you know, crappy quality, is it? So No, it looks decent. Looking nice. forward to trying those out. Maybe we'll do a back-to-back -back where we both ride them. Sure. Now, the other bikes that have caught our eye on this stand are the retro anniversary paint jobs for the ZX-10R. So there's three. One that I said looked a little bit Christmassy. Christmassy, yeah. Green, white, and red. It is red. very Christmassy, but I it's nice. I know it is Kawasaki, you know, retro historical colors, but it does have a festive appearance. <laughs> Quite nice. Appropriate, good timing. Then we've got the green, white, and blue over yeah. there with the pink logos. I think that is my favorite. My favorite, though. It's very close. This is nice. Yeah, purple, black, pink, a little bit of silver. And what's interesting about these is we've had lots of interactions with people who watch the channel out and about around the show, which has been amazing. And speaking to people about, you know, what's caught your eye, anything you fancy sort of thing, uh, these special paint jobs. I would put, uh, like, money on it now that these would be the ones my dad goes, oh, nice, because he used to have a ZX-7R, I think it was, in that color, so the green with the pink logo. I think he's going to like these, yeah. Question, though, do you think sports bikes are the new retro scene. Yeah, I think it's having a resurgence as well. In, in Like 90s a way. vibe and that sort yeah. of thing. You know, we've got stuff like the Thruxton, which has been discontinued this year. So maybe the 60s and 70s inspired bikes are starting to Yeah, I think we're moving up to 80s and 90s for sure, yeah. And I'm quite happy about it because these look absolutely fantastic. The only issue is you spotted the price, which oh, I, yeah. I didn't even look <laughs> oh, at earlier. Oh my God, yes. 26 and a half. Thousand pounds. Yeah, that really did surprise me. I don't think a regular ZX 10R is anywhere near that. Well, it is an RR. It is an RR. Uh, but still, that does sound rather steep. It's one that's just for the well to do sports bike enthusiasts, but still doesn't stop us appreciating it here on the Stanton. True. Now, over at Triumph, and we're stood by the new 400 singles, which I think you're a fan of, right? Definitely a fan, yeah. You asked me if I'd have one, well, and I said, I don't know. Yeah. If, as my one and only, I'd want something a little bit bigger. But if I could have a second bike. 400 single, it makes about 40 odd horsepower. So is that the issue for you on the road? On you the road, I was saying this to you before, yeah. So if I was going for something that was, as an off-roader, I think I'd, you know, I'd quite like a little 400 or something because you don't need more power than that. If you're going off-road, you want it to be lighter, stuff like that. This isn't the kind of bike that I genuinely would take off-road. I know it can do it. It's great that it is a scrambler and you can go and zip around, but we all know, we both know that like a scrambler yeah. isn't the tool you want really for that purpose. So it wouldn't be my pick for that, but as a city bike, Bike, as like a yeah hop around town that sort of stuff and you can, it'll still do you know higher speeds and stuff so you can still go and have some fun on b roads and things great bike great starter bike as well certainly see a market for it and if i was i don't know a little bit earlier in my riding that's a bike i would consider but if you've got a bike that has to do everything your one and only bike it it's wouldn't be, be able this to do one, a bit more yeah, not a mark against it at all I was sort of expecting this to be the busiest part of the Triumph stand just because of the really appealing price point. Yeah. 
But it was kind of interesting that over where the Rocket 3 was, there was just a big crowd of people. And it just goes to show that even if you put out something that's kind of like affordable and therefore accessible to a lot of people, it doesn't necessarily generate, you know, the video we made about this bike got a lot of views, but still people are attracted to the thing they can't afford, <laughs> potentially, <laughs> yeah. at 20 or 20 I mean, odd grand. You or me, right? I'd be going over and sitting on the rocket because yeah. it's not the bike I'm going to buy. I haven't got the money for that. I probably never will, but that's the one I want to go and sit on. This is the sort of bike I probably would end up buying. Yes, absolutely. And maybe there's something in that for the strategy of the manufacturers. I mean, look at Ducati recently putting out that super special looking anniversary edition of the Panigale V4 SP2. It's like 40 grand. And you're thinking, well, who's going to buy that? Who's interested in that? But ultimately, that's what gets people excited about the company and the brand. And it maybe is the thing that sways them to buy a Scrambler. Or it's the gateway, isn't it? Yeah. Gets yeah. you into the brand, like you say, and then, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that. The other bikes on the try and stand that caught your eye were the Stealth Editions. Really nice. Blue and red, personally prefer. Did like the, it's like an orangey green, isn't it? On the um, Street Scrambler. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit more subtle on the red and the blue. Yes. It blends in a bit better. Yeah, really like that. If I was buying a Bonneville, that's the color I'd be going towards for sure. Absolutely. You didn't actually know that I'd painted one as well. That was something <laughs> I did on the main channel. I, wow, see it. I don't think that video I is... I want to feel it. I feel like it's going to be bumpy or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was lucky enough to go to the factory, got to paint one of the stealth editions. You had to basically it's a base coat of like um, metallic red on that red one you like. Then you fade the black on top. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got it wrong. I think it's base coat of silver. Metallic red. Uh, sorry, base coat of silver. <laughs> I did do it, I promise. Base coat of silver. Yeah. Fade the black. Okay. And then put candy clear red over the top. Over the I top. Think that's okay. what we did. I have to watch it back, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it, they did post it out. It's in the studio did now. Did you black out while you were doing it? I honestly. <laughs> Is that why it looks so ropey? Uh, <laughs> it's in the studio now. I was really chuffed when I finished it. And in the video, I was like, oh, look, it was a great experience. And I think the tank looks fantastic. But then I had to add a part to the video where it arrived in the studio. I got it out of the box. And under the hex lights, you know, my studio that are very bright, I was like, where? Well, it's not perfect. <laughs> it's a little like orange skinny, which Character. is is a sign of a bad paint job. But my, in my defense, I reckon they didn't rub it down to the same level they would with a proper it. one. Yeah, they've hamstringed you there, haven't they? They stitched me up. <laughs> <laughs> Question, mate. Are there too many Tenere 700s now? Possibly. Count them out for me. It was originally like a very simple bike, wasn't it? You know, a yes. little parallel twin, yeah. good off-road chassis, and that's what made it appealing. Good price point. Now it's becoming a little bit complex, and I think the heads of the Yamaha potential customers might be spinning. So you've got... Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> base Tenere 700. Okay. Then you've got the Explore model, which is new for this year, and that's got luggage as standard, a bigger windscreen, lower suspension, so road focused, touring focused. Yeah. Then you've got the Extreme, which gets taller suspension. That's quite cool that? looking. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah. Then you've got the World Raid, which gets taller suspension, like yeah. that. Yeah. And a much bigger fuel tank, so it's like a World Rally Raid, long distances off road okay. kind of bike. Yeah. I really like that bike. I've read it at the off-road centre. Excellent. That's then this the one, World Rally I'm reading on there. Okay. This is the World that, Rally. Is that different to that one? Uh, yes. Uh, Marginally. I'm looking at this, the thing. Key features. Colours, Akrapovic, dual tank, seat. I honestly don't know what's different. I'm loving the little like, camo on the plastic. Yes, it, looks, it, it looks cool. But I'm just yeah. like, if I'm buying one, which one am I buying? Which one would you yeah. go for? Uh, <laughs> this one because it's pink and blue, isn't yeah, it? It's right in front of me. This one, this one here. I do like the uh, the dual tank. That's I don't know. It's quite a cool little. So basically, is it necessary? Well, how that works, I believe, is you've got this big tank that's 23 liters or something like that, right. and the idea is that it hangs down either side a little bit like a KTM, the balance, keeps okay, the yeah, weight okay, a bit yeah, lower. Yeah, yeah. But down here somewhere, I think there's a link pipe between the two main cells of the tank right. uh, to even it out but I think it might be quite slow to trickle through, and so you've got two fuel filler caps so you can fill it quicker. Okay, 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 okay. But it's, it's not so slow that it would throw your balance off, but too slow to fill up just one side. Uh, one side. Something like that, mate. Because otherwise like that would be redundant. Okay, I mean, it looks cool, if nothing else, and it must be functional, because you wouldn't just stick that on there for the sake of sticking it on there. Genuinely, I think this, well, this or the extreme, I do like extreme things. 
I love them. That gold, like the little gold pops on it, the wheels, the forks. It's a little stubbier looking as well. I yeah. think does the business really. It's, it's very, what would you call it, specialized as a bike, that one. One thing that I will say, in my experience of riding them, is that the World Raid, the World Rally, and the Extreme all get the upgraded KYB suspension. And it was really, really noticeable riding them off road. On the road, probably not such a big deal for the, you could go for the T7 or the Explore, which is a little bit lower. Yeah. Uh, but if you are going off-road and you can get a good deal where it's like not a great deal more to get one of these versions then, and if you can deal with the extra height, then it, it's like night and day. It feels so much more controlled and, and, and like you can just do anything on it, even if you're not a brilliant rider and it will just kind of soak it up. So. I'm with you. Do you think then with all of the upgrades uh, and the tweaks, improvements that, because originally I would say it probably had the crown and then KTM with the 890 Adventure, you know, jostled between the two. Do you reckon it's then taken the lead again or is it uh, too close to call? In your, which one did you prefer? It's probably hard enough to say, you know, uh, that one is definitely better, but you must have preferred one. I think realistically, because I just ride more on the road, so I'd, I'd buy it as a like all rounder, but most of the miles I'm gonna do be on the road, then the fact that the KTM's a bit more punchy, it's like a hundred and something horsepower, uh, just makes it more entertaining, more grim factor on, on the road. On the yeah, road. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'd probably go that way. And it's got a more advanced electronics package, which might be good if you do ride in the wet and stuff. Uh, so I think that's probably where I'd go, but it's very close. And if I was riding off road, I think I might go for one of the Teneres with I the good suspension. I think these look better than the KTM's though They do, well. they do, you poser. <laughs> <laughs> Over at Ducati now, and we have to talk about the new Hyper Motard 698. It's actually, I think it's a 659, and then they've cheekily renamed it as a, yeah. <laughs> to make it sound a bit more spicy. Uh, but it has to be one of the most exciting bikes of the show in terms of like a new development. It's an all new bike, a new engine for them. And it looks proper good, doesn't it, in the flesh? Oh yeah. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. Uh, and again, because it's a Supermoto style, having the graphics on there, it's appropriate. It suits it. I mean, Ducati always do styling well. It's not something they lack at, at all. But this one's definitely an eye-catching paint job. It's the RVE version, so it's a lot more punchy than the standard version, which is just the classic Ducati red. I think you also get the quick shifter standard and maybe the fancy exhaust and that sort of thing. Right. The only thing is, it's like up at 905 mil, maybe in the seat or something like that. It's right. really- Yeah, we but actually, you did say check we if you can We sat on the Desert X it. Rally, didn't we? Yeah, and that's yeah. too tall for probably <laughs> both of us. Yeah. I think you're in a similar situation there, which is interesting interesting because it sits in the Ducati lineup quite you know low in terms of pricing because it's a relatively simple bike it's not got a fancy TFT or anything like that single cylinder quite stripped back it's still got that Ducati swag as you say but it's in the sort of is it like 10 or 11k for the base model around that kind of area so in a way it's like a Ducati that people can actually maybe realistically look at owning but then it's so tall that it probably actually rules out quite a lot of people. Yeah, I would say so. I, you know, yeah, you can always sort of side saddle it and just swing <laughs> one cheek off, but um, but not everyone likes doing that. Not everyone's comfortable doing that. Obviously, we ride a, ride a lot of bikes, so between the two of us, I think we're pretty comfortable on bikes that are too tall for us. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a consideration for sure. For me, I'm excited to see how a Ducati single fares. Um, it's been a while, I think, since they've had a single, right? Yeah, it has. And I'm excited to see the uh, the wheelie assist. Yes, we I talked about that recently, didn't we? Yeah. It basically helps you hold a wheelie with the front wheel sort of in the air at a set height, which is just interesting and sounds like a lot of fun. Have you ever considered buying a supermoto before, though? No. Would you? Genuinely not. Um, yeah, I think I would. Wouldn't be my first pick. And again, it'd be one of those things where you have multiple bikes. It wouldn't be my one and only bike. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You? It's a little bit niche. Well, not really. And I rode the Gas Gas 700, which is the same as the KTM 690, but just with a different paint job on it. And uh, look, it opened my eyes a bit. It seems like a little bit of a niche subculture within um, motorcycling. The people who ride them at the tracks and stuff and, and own them seem to absolutely yeah, love yeah. it as a a dedicated discipline and it wasn't something I'd really checked out, but I've got to say I do kind of get it now from riding that bike. It's the okay. lightness, yeah, really lightweight, really nimble. chuckable and yeah. torque as well from that single, very, very punchy and because it's so light and, that's, and the throttle was quite abrupt, it just feels like thrills yeah. beyond what the spec sheet. Yeah. This is a, a recurring theme today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suggest. Don't read the spec sheet. Yeah. yeah, no, I would say from people I've known who've had hypermotards in the past, a lot of them are being like, it's one of my favorite bikes, if not my favorite bike that I've owned, which has always surprised me and intrigued me, which is why I want to try them. If I was to have a Supermoto, I think I would want to do the Husqvarna 
route that um, one of my, uh, Hawkeye Moto, who we went and mm. shot with, he had a KTM and he had a smaller front wheel, a 17 inch front wheel, and then he had the 21 inch front wheel and he just flipped between the two. Ooh. So for me, to go back to the origins, I, guess, I think it's the origins of Supermoto, but to have a uh, an off-roader, an enduro bike that you can then swap out the front wheel on and then make it a bit more nimble, that makes more sense to me because then you've got two bikes in one. But then you've got to swap the tires. True. Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> All right. On paper, <laughs> I like it. In principle, like, ooh, uh, fancy going for a little road spin today. I'll I get that. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, sorry, lads, I can't join you. I've got the uh, the knobblies on it today. On the flip side, though, it is an affordable way to get two bikes for the price exactly. of one. Just exactly. Just buy a, set, a second set of wheels. I assume he's got a second rear wheel as well so that he's not yes, changing yeah, the tyre. Yeah, he's got spare tyres, basically, which is the best way to do it. I Very mean, you can't smart. necessarily do that with your ZX-10R or, you know, I guess your Tiger, stick some 17s on it. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Yeah, fair point. But anyway, yeah, definitely looking forward to checking this one out. It's high up the list, on the list of bikes to review in 2024. Just might need you to come over and give me a... Happily. A leg up to get on it. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now over at Royal Enfield, we've had a little chance to look at the new 450 Himalayans. It's of interest for you because your day job at Urban Rider, you've actually taken Royal Enfield on as a, now a dealer. Yep. Uh, so hopefully you'll get a chance to ride this fairly extensively. And Almost the one certainly. that's caught our eye here is actually the Rally Edition, which we're not quite sure if this is going to be available as a, a model in the UK, but it looks well good, doesn't it? Yeah, there's some nice little modifications across it. One of the big ones for me, seat, obviously it's got a, an arrow, I think, collab exhaust on yep. it. Probably a few other things. What did you mention about it? Well, it's got the headlight guard, radiator guard, and also a very nice looking kind of topographical or camo inspired paint job, which really does give it a bit of a lift. and. Also also, the tail section, there's a different bit of bodywork. It looks bulked out, almost like a fuel pod, but I don't think it is, but it's definitely got that vibe. And of all the bikes uh, that they've released, all the different colorways, let's say, so you've got the gold wheels with the black, and there's a couple of other different ones. This is the one that appeals to me the most. I think it's a very nice looking bike. Yeah, it's quite slender looking as well, isn't it? It looks, I mean, it's a small bike anyway, but you want it to be small and fun and kind of playful, and it looks that way to me. The other one that's caught our eye is the Him E Electric. Yeah, that I love the name. Looks, yeah. <laughs> good little pun. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one, yeah. And it does look trick. It looks really cool. What Again, is it that looks better about that than the 450, let's say? Do you know what? I think it's like the side panels of it. It's, uh, what's the sort of, what's the name of the metal that they use? Like the gnarled metal. They have it on like Land Rovers and stuff like that. You'll have Checker it on. Plate. Like, yeah, I guess. No? Uh, but the, yeah, the side panels, in essence, on that look really cool. Just a bit uh, of a slab. A little bit of like a cheese grater, actually, now that I'm looking at it from this distance, but in a good way. Maybe that's intentional. If you go on an adventure and you get low on calories and you start getting lightheaded, just Wait, grate some salad. cheese. It does look cool. It's like a bit raw looking, but I think that's maybe what's appealing about it. Quite futuristic looking. Have you noticed, though, that the seat covering goes right up over yeah, where the fuel tank that. would be. Yeah, like the fuel tank, that looks a little odd and I didn't notice that on first inspection, but then you look at it a bit longer and uh, yeah, it's a little strange. I mean, the shape's good. I mean, it me at least it means you're never gonna smash your knackers against the tank. That's, you've got a full Amen. on bouncy castle there for your plums. Yeah, it's not a pleasant experience. <laughs> and so anything they can do to reduce that. And you don't need a rock hard fuel tank there because it's electric, so. Exactly. Yeah, and it's going to carry that weight low, you'd imagine. I do like, it really does look quite raw. Yeah. It looks like, because they've got a whole load of customs from Royal Enfield, and that's one of the things they've really kind of uh, highlighted here at their stand in particular. But um, I think with that one, it almost, uh, again, at first glance, I thought it was just a, a Royal Enfield custom that someone had made. Like the uh, sort of hand-finished welded bash plate and stuff like that. It just looks really utilitarian, which yeah. is really yeah. cool. Very cool indeed. And I'm interested to see what comes of that and what electric Enfields hit the market first. I wouldn't expect it'll actually be a Himalayan. Do you actually probably think? Probably not. Nah, no. it's probably a town bike, right? Bit of a shame. But anyway, lovely looking. Rounding off at BMW, we're looking at the new R12 and R12. 12.9T. So we know what this is, the R12.9T. It's a replacement for the R9T. Yeah. The R12 is a kind of new thing. It's a more cruisery style bike. My question for you is, which one would you prefer? Because... The R12. Sorry, you won't be able to hear it from pointing, but yeah, the R12. Yeah, same. Hands I was thinking down, like, That's so nice. I was kind of interested in this and I thought, that's a bike we've enjoyed in the past. That's probably the one I'm going to like. Yeah. And when I heard about R12 like being copyrighted, nice. I was like, oh, is it just going to be like a mini R18? Is that going to be good? But it looks proper cool, doesn't it's it? It's really cool looking. Chunky little thing. Yeah. 
Very it's, cool. I mean, yeah, I guess it's it's not what we're saying. It's like cruiser-esque, I suppose, but not. It's just a little bit lower, I think. It's lower in the seat. It's got a bigger front wheel, a 19 instead of a 17. Okay. And uh, 16 at the rear instead okay. of a 17 on the rear on the sure. standard bike. The bars are a little bit up. The okay. foot pegs are a little bit forward. Yeah, yeah. But it's not full cruiser, you know. No, it's, it's mid not. position yeah. foot pegs. And I mean, we both like cruiser. I can't speak for you, but mm. for me, I, I, I have owned a cruiser, the V9, liked it, but yeah, I... I'd prefer a bike with a little bit more lean on it, let's be fair. Yeah. And you, there's something you just can't get around on any cruiser. It's going to be a weakness of it. Um, but this but looks a bit more sporty, it, Yeah, it, it looks like it will lean over, which if you can get the, the thing I liked about my V7 is it felt like a, it felt like a cross between, no, my V7 rather than the V9. I did like the V9, but the, the reason I liked my V7 more is because it kind of felt like a cruiser. It felt that kind of raw and relaxed, yeah. but it would still lean over. So Great. this looks like it would tick that sort of category. And aside from that, like those double pipes out the side there look really cool. Visually, it just looks better than the other one as well, but I'm sure I'll prefer that to ride. Do you remember the R1250C? Oh no, R1200C was it? The one that was in the James Bond film with yes. Pierce Brosnan. Yes. And it was kind of like a bit of a weird looking bike. Yeah, yeah. Cantilever this... front suspension was it on that one? Uh, it has like the, yeah, the telelever, telelever thing that you sorry, get on like the GS and whatnot. Yeah. Is this sort of like a, Retribution? No, is, what do I mean by that? Not retribution. Like vindication. This is like them doing it over, but doing they, it right. Maybe just look, they've learned and they got it right now, and and they've nailed it. And so this is the bike that that could have been or should have been because it, it looks like it's going to be really good. I mean, of course we haven't driven it yet. It might be terrible. <laughs> yeah, it might be a dog. It won't be. But certainly on the looks front, that was one thing that was a bit weird about that. Um, it might even be an 1100 that one. I'm not sure, but yeah, looks wise, it was yes, a, a yeah, little yeah, unusual. Yeah. This fantastic looking. Like it a lot. So. That rounds off our little whistle stop tour of Motorcycle Live. Many thanks for listening, everybody. We really appreciate your support. We'll be back soon with another podcast, one yeah. assumes. Remotely, I won't see your face that time, which is a shame. We'll embrace before I go. But yeah, many thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.